Module 2, Heaters. Water transfer operations use heaters across many applications. These devices are capable of storing and releasing large amounts of hazardous energy that need to be understood and respected. Welcome to the Energy Safety Canada video series on surface water transfer operations. This module focuses on bulk water heaters. Bulk water heaters are typically used to ensure that water does not freeze while being transported through the lines and is a critical piece of equipment. We will review the hazards of operation including hot fluids and grounding and bonding. Hot liquids. Typically, the heaters used in these operations only need to reach a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius or 85 degrees Fahrenheit. The fluid only needs to be hot enough to not freeze on the way to the staging area or the next heater location. Although these temperatures are not as high as steam, this temperature needs to be respected. Due to the large volumes of water, the energy output of these heaters is significant. Output can be in the range of 20 to 40 million BTUs. To put that into perspective, a household water tank is generally 26,000 BTUs. These units are the equivalent of 500 to 1,000 household water tanks. There are critical safeguards built into each heating system, which need to be maintained and are fit for service to ensure safe operation. Some examples of them are temperature sensors, relief valves, and high temperature shutdowns. Safeguards are in place to maintain proper function and must never be bypassed. Ensure you understand the equipment in use by your operations and all of the safety systems involved. Refer to your specific standard operating procedures and manufacturer recommended operating procedures. During cold weather operations, testing is frequently done to monitor the temperature down the line and ensure lines do not freeze off. Without proper planning and execution, freeze off can be a serious issue, suspending operations, creating pressure spikes and damaging equipment. In some cases, frozen lines will need to be left until spring when they can be recovered. Grounding and bonding. Grounding and bonding is important to maintain safe electrical operations and ensure equipment operates consistently. Grounding is connecting a conductive object to the ground so that the object is at low electrical potential. Bonding is connecting two or more conductive objects together so they are at the same electrical potential, but this is not necessarily low electrical potential. Without grounding and bonding, equipment may function unreliably, may build up charge and shock, and could become an ignition source. To ensure safe work, metal ground rods or plates are used. To install a ground rod or plate, a ground disturbance ticket is required. There are many requirements depending on the location and specific site hazards. Make sure you know where the grounds to use are located or if they need to be installed and who is qualified to do so. When you have the ground point identified, a grounding cable is attached, usually with a lug. Connection should be metal to metal with good solid contact. Loose or corroded connections can produce hazards that may interfere with equipment operations. Preventative maintenance should be conducted on the unit at service intervals but sometimes you may need a verification check performed with a multimeter. Ask about your company's specific procedures. Bonding and fueling. Fueling operations represent a number of hazards, from spills to fire and explosion. Bonding is usually done when fueling. Incoming supplies of fuel need to be bonded to the equipment being filled. This ensures that no discharge of built-up static electricity occurs to prevent a potential explosion. Some vehicles may need to be grounded and bonded. Check your company's specific procedures and the Equipment Manufacturer Operating Guide. Falls. Typically, stairs are installed to aid in getting on and off the equipment. A fall from the top is classified as a fall from a height and serious injuries have been reported. Ensure the stairs are fitted correctly and are in good shape. Check the mounting pins or clips when placing stairs to ensure stability. Work boots with grip cleats are becoming more prevalent in the industry. These aid in traction in various weather conditions and geographical environments. Cleats on metal surfaces may be slippery, however, and some may present a sparking hazard, though non-sparking cleats are available if required. 
When working around heaters, ice will melt and form puddles. Adding sand or traction aids is a good practice. Noise. As with many other pieces of equipment working around water transfer operations, noise levels are a concern. Wear the proper PPE when working around areas that approach or exceed 85 dB. At 105 dB, double hearing protection is required. Bulk water heaters are an important part of cold weather operations, but require significant amounts of attention and care. Only operate heating equipment when you have been trained to do so and deemed competent by your employer. Be sure to know what competence programs are in use by your organization and how often they are to be reassessed.